everybody, this is your part two of your lecture, data and frequency tables. So in the part one, you have seen what is statistics and why do you need statistics. Now in this part, you're going to see the different types of data and how to distinguish between them and how to summarize, particularly the quantitative data using frequency table. Okay. Okay. So data, what are the different types of data? We have two types of data, qualitative and quantitative. As the term indicates, qualitative data is based on the quality, yeah? So what is, your, what, what is qualitative data? The data relating to categories of some feature. That is, here, the data cannot be measured easily but can be observed subjectively based on your opinion or feelings or texture or smell or uh, taste. Yeah. So the data that are related to categories of some feature are called qualitative data. For example, hair color. So you could have black hair, brown hair, golden hair. Or a good, another good example is a blood type. That is, you could have A type, B type, AB type, or the donor O type. Yeah. So these are qualitative data. Now, what is a quantitative data? As the term indicates, quantity, you can quantify these data. How can you quantify data? Using numbers. So these data consists of numerical data. So quantitative data are Quantity data are data that can be represented in numbers. Okay, so basically, when you can measure something and give it a number value, then it is a quantitative data. And when you can classify something or categorize something, it is a qualitative data. Is that okay, guys? Okay. So quantitative data can be of two types. One, discrete data, and the other one is continuous data. So let's see what is discrete data, and then we'll see what is continuous data, okay? So discrete data, data that can only take set values, that is finite values. For example, number of children in a family. So you can have four children in a family, you can have two children in a family, but you can't have 4.2 children in a family. No, you can't have 4.2 children in a family. No, you can't have 2.3 children in a family. No. Basically, discrete data are data that can that are that take integer values. Usually, they take integer values. That is, they have discrete. It's a number. It's a discrete number. It is more precise. Yeah. So it takes integer values. Okay. So it takes integer values. Let me write it down for you. And so that is your discrete data. Now, what is the other type of data? Quantitative data. You have two types of quantitative data one discrete, and the other one is continuous data. Data consisting of measurements on a continuous scale measured to some degree of precision. That is, we could have infinite decimal places, okay? So for example, height of your classmates, weight of your classmates, temperature of your room. So temperature of your room could vary from 20.13, 20.23, it could vary, it could have any number of, any number of, any continuous value, isn't it? So like in decimal places, yeah? So that is continuous data, okay. Weight of your class, classmates, yeah, that's a good example too, yeah. So you can't have a discrete value here. Continuous data is something which cannot have, you cannot have a discrete value, okay. Okay, now let's take some examples, okay. Here I have a table with two columns. The first column, in the first column, I will give you some data. In the second column, you have to identify the type of data. You have to identify the type of data. Just type down your type in your answer. Okay. Okay, let's start. White blood cell count. 
what type of data is it? Is it a qualitative data or is it a quantitative data? And if it is a quantitative data, is it a discrete quantitative data or a continuous quantitative data? Okay, guys, good. Good, very good. Okay, number of patients in a doctor's surgery is a quantitative discrete data because you can't have 20.5 patients coming to the surgery. Yeah, you can have either 20 patients coming to the surgery or 21 patients coming to the surgery, but not 20.5. Is that okay, guys? So it's a discrete data. Okay, next one. Very good, it's qualitative. You can categorize the color, isn't it? Yeah. Good, you can have decimal places there. Yeah, you can have in points, yeah. Good. Again here, number of bacteria, discrete, okay? It, you can't have 10,000.5 bacteria. You can have either 10,000 bacteria or 10,001 bacteria. Good, it's continuous as we have seen, yeah? I love this question. Age, it's quantitative continuous. It's a continuous data, isn't it? So you could have, you could be 18 years old. Your friend could be 18.5 years old. That is 18 and a half years old. Yeah. Your another friend could be 18 years, nine months old. That means 18.75 years old or your friend could be 18 years, two months old. That means 18.16666 years old. That is, we could use infinite decimal places, yeah, to express this, yeah? So that means age can be considered as quantitative continuous data, yeah? So, so this clearly helps you to understand the difference between qualitative data and quantitative data. And in quantitative data, there are two types of data, discrete and continuous. Okay, so the first few weeks, I think most of the weeks, we'll be concentrating on quantitative data. The last couple of weeks, we'll be concentrating on qualitative data. Okay, so from now, we're going to concentrate more on quantitative data. Yeah. Okay, so now you know how to distinguish between the two types of data that is qualitative data and quantitative data. And you also know how to distinguish between a discrete continuous, discrete data and continuous data, okay? So let's see, yeah, you know the difference between all these four types of data, yeah? I mean, three type, two types of data, yeah? And in quantitative, you have discrete and continuous, okay? Now, how to summarize quantitative data, yeah? So we use something called frequency table, to summarize quantitative data. So that's what we're going to see now. Okay, to understand this, let me take some example, yeah? Because using an example of data, we can understand this more easily, yeah? So let me take an example. Let's consider the following re data relating to the number of children in each house of, in each house. That is, we have 23 houses in a small village, and we're going to collect the data about what? About the number of children in each of these house. Okay, so what type of data is it? Good, it's a discrete quantitative data. Yeah, so what does this mean, this data? That is, in the first house, you have two children. In the second house, you have one child. The third house, you have three children. In the fourth house, you have four children fifth house, you have two children and so on. And 21st house has two children, 22nd house has two children, 23rd house of three children. Look at the 
way the data has been arranged. Does it make any easy to study this data if it is represented in this way? Yeah, it's better to represent it in a more easy way to study the data. Yeah, it is very difficult to understand such data. Yeah, and especially when the data, when you have large number of data, probably if you are talking about maybe 10,000 houses, if you're talking about, about collecting the data for 10,000 houses, when the data set is larger, then this, be this becomes difficult to study, yeah? It's difficult to study such data. So what do we do? We can summarize it, yeah? To understand the data, we can summarize it into a using a table or something, yeah? So such a table where you can summarize the data into much simpler form is called frequency table, yeah? So for example, you have number of children. You can see how many times, how, how many houses have zero children? You can have one house, two house. So you have two houses with zero ch children. How many houses have one child? So you can count one, two, three, four, five. So you have five houses with one children. So you're going to see how frequently this something is happening. Yeah. So how many houses have five children? I mean one children and so on. Okay. So this form of summarizing the data is called frequency table. Okay. So this we are talking for quantitative discrete data, okay? So when you represent a raw data in this form, yeah, when you summarize the raw data into in a frequency table, it helps us to understand the data more easily because it shows the frequency F of each value in the data set. So you can say that there are two houses with zero children, there are five houses with one child, there are eight houses with two children, there are four houses with three children, there are three houses with four children and zero houses with five children. There is, there is no house with five children, there is one house with six children. So the frequency, you should be familiar with this term, Frequency, what is frequency? Frequency of a particular data value is the number of times the data value occurs, the, how frequently something is happening, okay? So please make sure you know the term frequency here. This is, this we're going to use more often, yeah? How frequently something is happening, yeah? Okay, now the second thing, why is it helpful? It orders the data from smallest value to largest value. So it helps you to see how the data is spread. So from zero to maximum six number of children. So you can order the data in increasing order or decreasing order, depending on how, con depending on your convenience, yeah? Depending on how it is, how you want it to study, okay? So you should order the data, which helps you study the data, yeah? And then it shows us the spread of values in the data set, how it's spread, yeah? Because you know, now you can see that how the data is spread. You have more family with two children, isn't it? Yeah, you have more family with two children, yeah? Now let me take another type of data. As you can see, what type of data is this? Here you have cholesterol data. Consider the following cholesterol data where each of the 30 readings are recorded to the nearest decimal places. What type of data is this? Good. It's a quantitative continuous data. Very good. If we try to summarize this data as a frequency table, just like how we did before, it will look something like that. 3.4, you have to order the data first, yeah? 3.4, one times. 3.9, one times. 4.2, one times. 4.2, does it make our life easier, any easier? Hmm, 
it makes it more complicated. There is no point using this frequency table in this form, okay? This is not going to help us in any way because you're going to have much more complicated table now because it is a continuous data. So for continuous data, you do not represent the, you cannot represent this data in this form because it, does, it doesn't make our problem any easy, yeah? Okay, so what do we do then? Okay, because the data is continuous. We are not going to use this anymore. What do we do? So we have to summarize it in differently compared to the data that is discrete. And how are we going to do that? If the data is continuous, we group the values in a grouped frequency table. So we're going to use grouped frequency tables. We're going to class the data, group the data, and represent it in frequency table. And that type of frequency table is called grouped frequency table. For example, what I've done here is I've taken data that lie between three to 4.5 and then represented the number of data that lie in three to 4.4, number of data that lie in 4.5 to 5.4. So between three to 4.4, there are four data as you can see here, yeah. So one, then you have two. Let me go from first row, okay? So first row, how many we have? One, two, and am I missing something? Something, something. Yeah, we missed this one, 3.9. Okay, four values, yeah. We have four values, so I put four data. Between 4.5 and 5.4, similarly, you have 12 values. And between six to 6.4, three values, yeah. So this is the way you group the values in a certain class, okay? So that's more easy to study now, yeah? You can see how the data is spread. So you can see that there are 12 data between 4.5 and 5.4. There are 12 adults whose cholesterol is between 4.5 to 5.4. You can easily see the spread of data, how the data is spread, yeah? But I would have classified this, I would have grouped it in this way, but you would have done this in a different way. You would have taken the class in a different way, yeah? You would have grouped it in a different way. So this means that we both can have different classes, yeah? Different group frequency. So that's absolutely fine because there is no fixed rule for how to group data, okay? Yeah, there is no fixed rule to do this. Just do it sensibly, okay? I know you may have now doubts, oh, this makes, how can you get a, how can you justify or how can you interpret this when you both, when you have two different grouped frequency table. And this is what we're going to see next week, how to compensate for that, yeah? When you have two different group frequency table, how to compensate for that. We're going to see that in next week. Okay, so let's concentrate on this, okay? You can, there is no fixed rule, how you get your grouped frequency table, you can have either this way or a different way, okay? It's all right. But note that the data is still ordered, the data is ordered, it is increasing from 3 to 7.4. It is increasing from 3 to 7.4. The data is ordered, it shows the spread of values. The classes cover all the values in the data and there is no overlap of the classes. There is no overlap of the classes. Can you see? There is no overlap of the classes, okay? There is no overlap of the classes, can you see? Okay. Now, over to you. I want you to read this question carefully and summarize the data in the following group frequency table and write down these values here. Very good. Okay. Now you have seen how to summarize discrete and continuous data using frequency table. Okay. So next class, you're going to see Okay, now let me just, okay, let me just show you what we're going to see. Next lecture, we're going to see the location and spread, okay? 
Thank you very much, guys.